Good morning, guys. It is now 6.30 in the morning, and we're on the way to the gym. So, you know, I want to talk today about the difference between uh, my experience with uh, Yamaha and Siru. I had the pleasure of uh, owning both, and there's definitely uh, some good sides and some pros and cons to it. I want to also mention that I'm working on the audio quality. Um, I know there's been some uh, road noise and stuff like that, which you probably hear a little bit of some in this video. I do try to do some uh, 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 noise cancellation when I when I when I'm uh, editing the video, which it does help. It just makes my voice a little bit funnier, but you know I I'd rather sacrifice that and not not to be so many uh, road noise on on the mic itself. So actually, I relocated the camera, so hopefully now you guys could hear me a little bit better and you don't hear so much as that uh that uh, road noise um so the difference between uh the yamaha and siru um which by the way i i loved my uh, yamaha when i had it i had the fx uh yamaha and it was a great ski overall i'm not gonna lie i had uh i put 260 hours on it um so that thing definitely hanged in there and to be honest, I, I, I didn't do any work to it besides the regular maintenance, oil change and stuff like that, spark plugs, uh, filter change. Um, it, it is a great machine overall. I never had any issues with it. I do know or I've heard that c does have a lot of issues with their uh, with their uh, electrical system since they have like a lot of tech, uh, tech, tech stuff. Um, they're prone to have more electrical issues uh, which you know that's pretty much uh, a giveaway obviously if you have more electronics definitely something is more uh, vulnerable to go to go out one thing that I did notice that it was a huge difference was uh, as you obviously probably already know is, is the hall I saw a very big difference when it comes to the hall the way that that uh, the FX which it was pretty much like the Cadillac on the water for a Yamaha um, what I did see from them is that whenever you catch like a small wake or a boat like that and you know you go right head on you know you, you'll feel more like the bang you know to, to the wake uh, with the sea uh, the deep hole since the bottom is a lot deeper I guess it will just cut through the water and honestly you don't even feel it it's uh, it's pretty amazing um, another difference that I felt you know uh, when I ride three people on the Yamaha um, I did feel it was a lot more unstable. Um, it feels like if you're not careful at a turn or, or you guys just standing and three people are just moving around, it's, uh, it feels very unstable. With the uh, new uh, RXTX uh, from Sidu, I definitely feel a lot more stability when it comes to that. Um, so that, that, that is a huge uh, Improvement that I've seen, you know, from one watercraft to another, which I, I seem to enjoy it. Um, I actually I've went on uh, long road trips with three people, um, you know, which that's something that I wouldn't dare to do on the on the Yamaha. Um, the most I ride three people is, you know, if we're offshore and somebody wants to ride with me for for a quick trip or something like that, or if we're skiing and we have to get all three of them uh, in one ski and, and such. It was the only way that I would actually uh, ride three people. Other than that, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, at least not if you want to get wet. I didn't have the supercharged one for the Yamaha, so I couldn't tell you power-wise. I do have a buddy of mine that has a supercharged one, and when it comes to power, it's pretty similar. Um, the Sidu. The current CDU that I have is a little bit more uh, powerful. It has a little bit more acceleration than than the than the Yamaha FX, and of course we're talking about factory, uh, both being stock. And I did uh, was able to race it as well with a factory 2016 FCR from the Yamaha, which is what everybody likes to use to to race and. It was a little bit better uh, when it comes. It was closer to me uh, in the competition, 
but still the the seed hoop was was quicker. Um, of course, from factory again. Um, another thing that I like about the the, the seed hoop, which is something that the Yamaha didn't give me, uh, it was uh, the storage. I love the storage on the seed hoop. You know, I don't have to bend over. You know, to grab oh, hey. to grab something from the storage. Uh, Yamaha, he definitely had it bent over. And sometimes it's a little bit pain, but especially if there's some weights. Um, I did buy the Sidu because one of the main thing is that I noticed that you know it was just a brand new design that they had just came out with, and I wanted to be in the water for this uh, summer. Um, that was actually one of my, my, my biggest thing that I, made me try the Sidu. Um, the Yamaha wasn't gonna announce till this August. I believe it announces the end of this August. And before you even get your hands on one, it's probably gonna be like January or so. So by that time, you know, it was the whole summer was pretty much gone. So I didn't want to do that. Um, so that was the biggest thing when it comes to uh, why I chose uh, Sidu. Um, besides me liking uh, some of the, the good things that I heard about it, the Depaul and stuff like that. Um, if I had to pick one from another, um, I only have 13 hours on my Sidu, so I don't really, so far I haven't had any issues with it, uh, reliability wise. Um, so far it's been very reliable. I haven't had any issues with it. I know people talked about, you know, wait till you get a hundred hours, you're gonna start having some issues with it. You know, I guess let's wait and see, you know, what happens. Um, and I know Sidu had a batch, you know, where uh, Sidus were actually sinking for what I have heard. And you guys, please let me know if, if, if I'm wrong. It's pretty much what information that I've been getting. It's that uh, there is a sensor or something like that that is in the exhaust or that was in the pre-rear exhaust. I believe they fixed, they corrected that issue already. Um, they had uh, an, a sensor in the sauce with an exhaust that when seaweed gets stuck in the intake um, and the engine wasn't pretty much cooling, it'll overheat the engine and people will just keep running it and that sensor would heat up and then it was pretty much cause it what will cause the water to get in there because the sensor was actually uh in a plastic tubing where the exhaust was which i don't know why they did it like that but hopefully uh i will have to check i believe they they uh corrected that issue i haven't heard any issues like that anymore but not just that you know uh realistically any jet ski can sink it's it's not you know, just because of, of, of the sensor. Um, I've actually seen a few Yamaha sinks myself. You know, I've, I actually experienced one of them. Um, I have a buddy of mine that had a, a Yamaha FX, um, like the one that I used to have. And I remember that we were on the water one day and we went wave jumping. And for some reason, I guess he probably already had like a bad motor mount. And when he jumped a few waves, um, I guess it broke the other two motor mounts and it made the engine to shift so that shifting right there made uh, some of the seals pretty much uh, pinch itself and it allows some water to get into the side so next thing you know you know his uh, ski was um, halfway full so we pretty much had to uh, get to an island and and try to drain as much water as we can and then rush to the marina um, to, to get the ski in there so so it wouldn't sink. We we're able to fix the problem and to get it just in time, but you know, guys, not only see do sink, you know, I have seen in Instagram and you know, in our jet ski groups, you know, uh, many uh, Yamaha has sink before. Maybe it's not as much as a sea do, you know, I don't know if you guys want to argue that. I'm really not defending uh, sea do whatsoever, I'm trying to be as uh, biased as possible. It really doesn't matter that I own a sea uh, For me, I could care less. Uh, I, it's a new experience for me. And actually, I had two of my buddies that, that rode the sea uh, when I first got it. And they're, they, one of them has a FCR and the other one has a, a FX Yamaha. 
and you know they never ridden one before and you know they they, they agreed that it was a pretty nice stable uh, ride so and it was pretty comfortable to them so they they really liked it i think a lot of people that pretty much trash talk the seat is because they really haven't uh ridden one you know so i definitely suggest for for you guys to go out there if you have a buddy i have one you know tell them to give you a ride on it you know to let you take it for a quick spin so you can see the different the difference in, in the experience and nowadays with the new body style it's uh it's fantastic you know it's there's a lot more technology it comes to it there's a lot more uh stability a lot more power um it's, it's pretty much a roundabout better jet ski um nowadays um the RXP, it's uh, it's a little bit different. It's, it's more sportier, I would say, than the RXT, which is the RXT is the one I own. Um, the RXP is more like for uh, just racing. The RXT, which is the currently one that I own, it's more for um, you could you could use it for uh, uh, racing as well, but it's more for like racing and then you get like a little bit more like uh, comfort comfort uh, that comes with it um, I I wouldn't trade my RXT for RXP any time of day I really think it's a better overall ski and I believe that um, for at least when it comes to like offshore and stuff like that the RXT is a lot better since it cuts better through the water and and the wakes and all that <clears throat> I highly recommend it, no, no doubt, hands down. Um, I do. I am curious to see what Yamaha comes out this year. Uh, obviously, I, I have to keep the Sidu now because I, I just bought it, and I, I am currently paying for it. So, but you know, I wanted to see uh, the competition. Another another reason why I bought the Sidu is because they offer not just the back. You know, it has the long the long platform. Um, which you could re you could blah, which you could remove it and somebody could lay in the back and you have all that space there. Um, I bought it as well for fuck. I just had it in mind. See, guys, editing is not that easy. I gotta cut all this shit up. Oh, I remember. So. You know, the other reason why I bought this, the ski itself is because the RXT from Sidu, it was the first year that I believe they came with the factory speakers. That to me was a big giveaway, like some of you guys already know. And my uh, FX from Yamaha, Yamaha has like a cup holder that you could put uh, pretty much water in there, a water bottle or whatever. I used to use that cup holder to put a UE speaker. The UE speaker is more like a rounded, uh, it's, the, it's called, most of you guys know it as a mega boom speaker. So it's like a rounded long tube. So I stick it in there and I'll pretty much just jam to music. Um, if you're going fast, obviously you weren't going to hear the music. But if you're cruising about, you know, 25, 30 miles per hour, it would be, uh, you could, you could listen to the music. And if you're idling or if you're, you know, uh, somewhere in a, in, a, in a sandbar or something, definitely you can hear the music and it makes a, the ride more enjoyable. So when I found out that Sidu was offering that feature, you know, it definitely made me think about it and look at the Sidu a little bit more. It's uh, it was kind of the, one of the selling points that I had uh, towards the ski at the time. I will be doing a review of my Sidu RXTX. Uh, as soon as I reach 20 hours right now it currently has 13 so I'll say probably two more weekends and I'll probably be there but I definitely wanted to get out the comparison to you guys because I know you uh, most of you guys you know are curious you know about the RXTX and don't really have much information or don't have a buddy that has one so you know hopefully these tips are, are, are useful for you guys and if you guys have any question you know definitely shoot me a comment I am pretty active when it comes to responding to you guys um, you know with whatever questions you might have I don't believe that you'll be disappointed in the Sidu whatsoever if you do purchase one I do like as well the IBR system how whenever you push the brakes on it you know the water comes all the way up uh, I think that's pretty cool you know uh, Yamaha doesn't offer that neither which is not a big deal I mean you know as long as it works but it's just a detail uh, Sidu put into it which if uh, I guess 
a little bit more stylish, and I, I, I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. You know how they took the time to just think that over, um, and they made a, and it's pretty it's pretty uh, good because let's say if you're uh, you're and your buddy are going pretty fast, and he you're probably like let's say 200 feet uh, in front of him, and you break pretty much, he's already aware that you know you you hit the brakes because you'll see the water. It's pretty much like brake lights and cars. So that's a pretty cool feature uh, um, that, it, that, that it has. Um, I also love how in the glove box or wherever you put your phone, um, it has a watertight uh, place, which uh, Yamaha didn't offer that. Um, they have a compartment where you can put your phone in a, like a cup uh, that is watertight, but only uh, FX offers that, and and it's not uh, and your phone is still pretty much jumping around and banging everything. So I like how Cedu thought about it and put it right in the front, and you can seal it. And then not only is it sealed, but you have like a cushion, a padding that it already comes with. So when you're wake jumping, the phone is not just banging in there. I already screw up two phones like that. Um, so definitely that's a good feature that they brought as well to the table. Um, I also like, you know, um, whenever, wherever you put your feet on the on the ski, it has like a side. Uh, so pretty much, if you if you're taking uh, tight turns, you can put your feet in an angle, so you don't have to be just flat. You can put it like in a in, a, in an angle, so you could hang on a little bit better. The ergo seats, um, it's fantastic. Um, wherever you put your your your, your legs. It, it holds on tight to it. It has that curve to it that it allows you to give you more confidence. Um, so that's a pretty nice feature that I like there as well. And overall, man, it's, it's just a great ski. I mean, hopefully it doesn't give me any issues. Good luck. I know you guys are gonna be saying that, um, but we'll, we'll keep you posted. I really do think that uh, Siru has, uh, has, has uh, done their homework on this one. The only thing that I am concerned about, which I have seen, I don't know if it's all models or if it's just some of them. Uh, some people have been complaining that their hull has been cracking. So I am a little bit concerned about that. I think they corrected that issue. I think it was only some of them that they were, uh, that they were fabricating in the beginning and they were having some issues with that. If you guys have any information on that, if it happened to you, please send me a comment. I'm very interested to find out and so I can follow up on that. Any information uh, you know that, that you have will help and if we stick together as a whole you know we'll have better ideas and then we'll help each other try to correct the problem if, if that's the case. So pretty much between the Cedu and Yamaha you know that was the issue. I, I did used to love uh, from the Yamaha you know the little squirt that comes out in the back. I know a lot of people hate that and a lot of people just take it off right from day one. I was one of those people that I always left it on there. You know, I remember as a kid, as I was growing up, I was seeing the little squirt, whatever. So to me, it was something pretty cool. Then again, I, I wasn't trying to make it into a race ski or anything like that. I was just, to me, I I try to leave it as stock as possible and, you know, just, just to go out on the water, have a good time and not have any reliability issues. It's pretty my thing. Um, I'm more like into exploring and, and you know, adventures. So. I will be doing some videos as well uh, of different ventures and I'm going to give you guys uh, pointers where to go, where to park the ski and this and that. And I know a lot of you guys have jet skis and you guys want to explore but you just don't know how or whatever the case might be. Um, actually, I really, me and my girlfriend, we just go on our own and pretty much uh, we are already equipped with all the equipment we need. I bought a, a VHF radio, which I'll post the links in the, the descriptions. I bought a GPS as well, you know, to make sure if you're lost, you know, you find your way back home or whatever the case might be. And you could pretty much track back uh, the same route you came through. So make sure you don't hit no uh, sandbars and stuff like that. Even though I know the tide can change, I do take that into consideration as well. I do recommend you guys to do some research when it comes to tides and all that and how to uh, uh, navigate through the water. Uh, that does come handy. Um, I has I have been stuck myself uh, in the past, so it's not a good feeling whatsoever. So that's really what made me uh, learn a little bit more about it. Um, 
So, you know, it's it's very fun. You know, if you go to the same place you always go to jet skiing, trust me, guys, I've done that. It's very boring. It, there there was a time that I didn't want to go jet skiing for more than a month, you know, two months. Uh, and then, you know, you want to go out to the water, you know, to the sandbar or whatever the case might be. But it's very boring. Um, here in Miami, like, for some reason, everybody just like going to the same place every weekend. Um, I don't find nothing attractive when it comes to that. I think it's very boring. Um, like I said, I'm more like, you know, adventurous type of guy. I like exploring new things. We're actually going to, on August 10th, we're going to uh, uh, this place by Jacksonville, which is called uh, Salt Spring. So if you guys want to see more information about that, um, we'll, we'll, we'll be touching up. Actually, one of my subscribers, which I'll be posting up his name on the screen, um, he's been uh, talking to me um, and give me some key points of uh, where to go and where to park and the gas stations uh, nearby uh, so you can refill for fuel and stuff like that so you know I appreciate people like that you know that gives me uh, good advice of where to go and you know how to make the trip and all that so you know thank you guys thank you as, as well um, you know for giving me those pointers that is uh, something that if you guys ever do shoot me a comment and be like, hey, look, why don't you visit this place? Most likely I will, um, especially me since I like uh, going out to all these uh, ventures. So if you guys know any places, please let me know. Uh, we'll be following up on that and and giving some pointers, you know, maps and stuff like that where you guys have to go. Um, and then hopefully you guys could go out there and explore more, more often as well, um, just like I do. As you guys know, if you follow my channel, I already been to a few places. I've been to um, Naples, uh, St. Pete. I've been to uh, Keys, uh, Isla Mor Morada, um, which they have the the famous alligator reef out there. It's a very nice place. The water is like crystal clear. Look at the, uh, my other video if you haven't seen that one for uh, the Keys. Um, which was recently submitted um, that was a pretty pretty nice video and I will be going back there hopefully this weekend um, I do want to try out the new wakeboard so that is something that I have uh, coming soon as well well guys thank you again for watching this video um, I know when it comes to reviews I really try to make like a five six minute videos uh, uh, it's really the main goal uh, when it comes to reviewing, obviously there's no five, six minute video. It's very hard because you're not going to get any information whatsoever with a five, six minute video. So that's pretty much why whenever it's a review, it takes probably about like 10, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, you know, uh, to, to get a, a good, decent review and to get you some uh, good information. So... You know, thank you for watching these videos again and give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe and I'll be seeing you guys on the next time. Thank you.